Hello everybody, I'm Daryl Dudley, and I'm going to talk about work zone uh, data today, try and get work zones on the map. Uh, so I'm a geographer at the U.S. Department of Transportation. Uh, I work in the research branch of the Office of the Secretary of Transportation, and most of my work is focused on developing geospatial data uh, for transportation data sets and standards. Uh, today I'm going to talk about, uh, an up I'm going to give you an update on the department's, oops, getting my notes here. Uh, the department's DAVI uh, initiative, which is data for automated vehicles integration, and also talk about, like I said, the work zone data exchange project. Uh, also going to talk about the priorities for data exchange and the important role they play in digital mapping. Uh, I'll highlight both the federal and non-federal role for accelerating uh, voluntary data exchange between infrastructure operators and owners, or we call them IOOs, and original equipment manufacturers. And then I'll identify new critical uh, use cases and priorities for data exchange, and we'll address specific needs uh, that will help further inform and provide innovation for transportation decision making. So let's start by looking at um, the AV program. Uh, back in October of 2018, uh, the department published uh, Preparing for the Future of Transportation Automated Vehicles 3.0. And that study focused on uh, advancing multimodal safety, um, advancing multimodal safety, reducing policy uncertainty. Uh, there's people want to know what the department's going to do about automated vehicles, and outlining policies for how to work with the department uh, during that those activities. Uh, data is a cross-cutting issue that appears throughout AV 3.0. Uh, and in this document, uh, the department explicitly calls for stakeholders to identify opportunities for voluntary data exchanges and for, oops, and it also highlights uh, efforts that are aimed at en enabling voluntary data exchanges. So AV 3.0 was developed uh, around the input from a diverse set of stakeholder engagements throughout the nation. Uh, through these engagements, engagements, we frequently heard about the need for data to remove uh, various barriers, barriers to autonomous vehicles and their integration. Uh, and this includes data produced by AV vehicles themselves, uh, but also uh, the data uh, that's consumed by uh, companies that map, map for AV, automated vehicles, autonomous vehicles. Uh, the U.S. Department of Transportation launched DAVI as a multimodal initiative to identify, prioritize, monitor, and where necessary address data exchange needs um, for automated vehicles. Access to data is a critical enabler for the safe, efficient, and accessible integration of AV automated vehicles into the transportation system, and a lack of access to data could impede uh, that integration or delay their safe introduction into the transportation system. Uh, better work zone activity data has been a focus for a while at the department. Uh, it's becoming a crucial and important part and a, a, a driver uh, for improved agency capabilities, uh, particularly as our transportation environment evolves and to accommodate auto autonomous vehicles. Uh, in the case of work zone data, we are determined we determined that there was likely a need for federal government to play an active role. And in this case, we're uh, facilitating uh, the meeting of industry players, uh, IOOs, OEMs, um, and they're kind of getting together to, to get through this stuff to figure out the specification. Uh, in the category of infrastructure data and the need to exchange data, we see a common pattern, and we like to call this the local data challenge. Uh, Up-to-date information about dynamic conditions occurring on the road, such as construction events, uh, can help AVs safely navigate uh, those areas and make them more efficient. Uh, for example, uh, many infrastructure owners and operators, IOOs, maintain data on work zone activity but a lack of common data standards um, and a convening mechanism for those 
organizations to talk to each other uh, makes it difficult for that data to be consumed and used by AVs. So um, the whole work zone data exchange is inspired by the GTFS story, the General Transit Fee Specification, uh, which was originally developed via the Portland TriMet uh, Trans Transit Authority and Google. Uh, GTFS enables the exchange of transit information between uh, service providers, uh, publishers, and writers. And the specification is very flexible and easy to adopt, which makes it more efficient at meeting the mission of what it needs to do, of meeting its purpose. So inspired by the GTFS, the department launched the Work Zone Data Exchange uh, to jumpstart a voluntary adoption of the basic Work Zone Data specification through a, collabor through a collaboration of data publishers, data publishers and users. Uh, the specification enables infrastructure, infrastructure owners and operators to make harmonized Work Zone data available for third-party use. The intent uh, of the, this exchange is to make travel on public roads safer and more efficient through a ubiquitous access to that work zone data. Specifically, the project aims to get data on work zones into vehicles to help automated driving systems and to help human drivers navigate more safely. The long term goal is to enable a collaborative maintenance and expansion of the specification to meet emerging needs of ADS. But more broadly, uh, through this project, the department aims to identify a repeatable approach to accelerate the harmonization of local data sources that can improve safety. Oops. One so here we have an example, um, Maricopa County, Arizona. It's uh, a pretty busy corridor in an industrial area. And you can see they've broken into two phases. If you want to see the feed itself, it's a, G, it's a JSON feed. You can go there and check it out. It's just a string. Um, but through that, they can show it on the map. And then it can also be read by uh, navigation systems as well. Uh, we also have another example in Iowa. The Iowa DOT is currently publishing a work zone data feed uh, Via the specification, it's an XML feed, not a JSON. So we don't tell you how to do it. We just tell you what, what the content is. Um, they start by formatting the existing 511 data to match the WZD specification. Uh, and then the asset management information data uh, is added to that. And then the data is cleaned and then published as an XML file. So a few lessons learned um, from all of this work. Uh, number one, immediate mid offense or may not be connected to automated driving systems. Uh, human drivers can also benefit, though. Uh, planners benefit, construction companies and workers can benefit. And we need to adopt, adapt uh, a value proposition based on the stakeholder. Lesson two, uh, we gained more clarity about uh, who the primary data, data users are, uh, which turns out to be the, the folks that are making the HD maps, high definition maps, uh, which are either done by in-house service or by a third party, and not necessarily OEMs or the car companies. Uh, lesson three, we also learned that standing up these data feeds is harder for IIOs, independent owners and operators to do, even when they already collect that information. Uh, proprietary infrastructure data systems make producing this data a challenge. Uh, for example, uh, confirmation of the local data challenge. Uh, public agencies often lack resources and capabilities to make the data available. Data layer services like Google Cloud or ESRI are critical for IOOs to get this data out. Uh, IOs will not necessarily be the ones to build the feeds, but rather they would host them in their provider layers. Uh, 
Lesson four, uh, there are multiple potential starting points for generating harmonized feeds. Uh, the current approach is based on harmonizing the basic work zone data that states could already make available today and identifying uh, what would be the highest priority data for them to make available tomorrow. And then lesson five, uh, there are many potential organizations and mechanisms to drive this vision forward. Uh, stakeholders were supportive of the GTFS style of approach to advance the new data exchanges. Uh, several were especially enthusiastic about uh, the USDOT's modern, uh, and modern and collaborative approach to standards development. Uh, a little bit about that, we've kind of tried to do standards in the past uh, by defining what the standard is and putting it out there and say, here's a standard, please adhere to it. Uh, it didn't really work. Uh, we tried to do everything in one big standard, but the, the GTFS model kind of follows the market and lets the, the, the community drive its, its, its development and specification. So we're trying to stick with that model, see if that's successful, and go forward from there. So uh, the work zone working group is accountable to the Federal Geographic Data, Com Data Committee's Transportation Subcommittee. I happen to be the chair of that committee. Hi. If you want to get involved, please talk to me after. Um, so the whole purpose of that committee is to drive the development of geospatial transportation data and standards. Um, we want to highlight or heighten federal awareness, not federal, just federal awareness about transportation data across the country and use that data to make transportation safer. safer. Let me get down some here. Okay. So the work zone data working group uh, has a few objectives and goals here. We wanted to not only define the specification, but also stand up a working group that would uh, be that organization that manages that specification as well. So we didn't want to, we didn't want the department to have it. We wanted to put it out into a community. So uh, members include uh, a lot. Uh, Lyft is there. Uh, General Motors is there. Uh, Google. Uh, Uber is, is, is there, um, a lot of states. So it's a community that, that's kind of diverse and they're all talking about it and really kind of doing a good job of managing that specification. Um, through that group, uh, they had to meet these objectives. They reviewed cur current content of version 1.1 of the work zone data specification. And they also reviewed the, the comments received from that community and then prioritized those as well. Uh, they recommend the changes that will happen to the specification, uh, and then they also groom the backlog of potential and future changes to the specification as well. We have a Git page, you guys can check it out. So we know that one of the biggest priorities we've heard uh, through this development uh, is the need for to get current information about whether work zone workers are actually present in the work zone. Uh, we're seeing improvements. We see improvements to worker safety as being one of the strongest reasons for investing in work zone dating uh, publication. Uh, we're looking to create a campaign around putting workers on the map and address the technical and institutional barriers to get that accomplished. Uh, safety is a top priority at the U.S. Department of Transportation, uh, and it's our organizational mission to enhance safety and mobility on our nation's highways. Uh, some statistics here. In 2017, there were 799 fatalities that took place in work zones, and that was a 2% increase over the previous year. Uh, 132 of those deaths were work zone workers. Uh, over 80% of fatalities in work zones are, driver, are by drivers or passengers just trying to navigate through the work zone. So 
So uh, we've created a grants program for work zone data. Uh, the purpose of the, is the, of the research program is to increase the safety of traveling, the traveling public through the production of consistent public work zone data feeds across jurisdictions. Um, so if you're a DOT and you want to get in on board, uh, apply for a grant, uh, and we can hopefully give you some money to kind of get these feeds up and running uh, by your, for yourself. One minute. Q and A. This is not my presentation. I feel a little awkward with it. I'm sorry about that. Uh, if you have any questions about works on data, though, happy to answer them. Sir. Could this be adopted for other types of road closures, like for parades? And yes. Um, it was. I want to kind of wanted to make it a, a bigger working group, not just work zone. I wanted to kind of be a roads event working group so that we could incorporate closures. Uh, but they had kind of they had a, a momentum with the work zone data thing, so changing the name would have kind of slowed it down. But I do I do see this evolving into a much larger road events kind of thing. So. Yeah. One of the phases is working with grants for asset management. Mm -hmm. Do you have a sign inventory or sign management practice for work zone? Uh, not right now, but if you want to join the working group, you can actually. Suggest that. Um, so if you just work zone data on GitHub and it'll come right up, you'll find us. And there's a place there to submit uh, change requests and things like that. One more question back. Uh, so are you working with any international partners? So this is not just a US problem? So um, we're not, but I'm certainly, you know, it's open to whomever wants to join. Uh, I'm certainly. <laughs> Certainly, to build an international standard, that would be great. Yeah. So, That's it for is that it? Time for okay. Thank you for your time. Sorry about reading to you.